This is EDUC 4703U, Teaching and Learning, Problem-Based Learning. The title of this video clip is Constructivist Learning Environments. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, what definition of teaching is promoted through the use of the constructivism-informed teaching learning model that's described in this clip? Number two, what does expressing learners' prior conceptions entail? Number three, what is meant by providing learning alternatives and judging alternatives? And number four, what are the differences between procedural and conceptual learning? Constructivism as a learning theory, and I'd ask you to take a look at session three video clips for an introduction to these ideas, is not a teaching theory. This essentially means that the theory cannot be used to directly cannot be used directly to produce processes that will ensure the ideas that will be learned by students. Instead, the theory provides explanations of student learning that can be used to construct environments within which learners will have opportunities to learn, rather than using direct teaching methods of telling the learners what they are expected to know. All of this has the impact of changing the teaching process from one of conveying information to the creation of environments within which learning can occur. The three-stage model that's shown on the screen, produced by Benz in 2008, describes how learning can, could be promoted within such learning environments. The first stage, expressing learners' prior conceptions. In this stage, students are asked to record their personal hypotheses and practical problems regarding certain practical experiences and concepts. The second stage, providing learning alternatives, the teacher arranges for students and learners to come to understand the viewpoints of others, including those of their classmates and those of others who are knowledgeable in the field. This is intended to challenge the student's prior conceptions as expressed in expressing learners' prior conceptions, the first stage. And number three, judging alternatives. The instructor insists that the student carry out their own scientific, that is, inductive and deductive tests of various alternative hypotheses and or solutions to practical problems. The teacher facilitator also ensures that students have a working knowledge of appropriate methods for study within the field. I'll be going through in this next several slides each of the stages of the model that was presented, the Ben's model of 2008. So starting with expressing learners' prior conceptions. The first stage which must be addressed when using this model is to acknowledge that learners have mental constructs about concepts that they bring along with them when they encounter new situations and ideas, even in a classroom setting. The express stage of the model requires that the learner identify these pre-existing mental constructs and a broad range of techniques can be used to elicit preconceived notions, that is, existing mental schema, which will need to be adjusted by the learner using the assimilation accommodation processes. And these preconceived notions will need to be elicited or pulled out of each of the learners. It's important to note that each individual should be given the opportunity to express their understanding of the phenomenon or concept, as each will have their own particular version. Practically, this might be done by arranging a variety of situations for the learners to experience. Based on these experiences, learners express their understanding of the phenomenon and or concept. Learners communicate their perspectives in a variety of ways, including concept maps, stories, poems, etc. In addition to these other forms of response, students are also directed to form hypotheses, practical problems, and possible solutions. This was the rationale for requiring each of you to complete a concept map at the beginning of this course. The second stage, providing learning alternatives. This is the section of the model where alternative, at least to the learners, understandings of the phenomenon and concepts are presented. Generally, this is done in a way that is unambiguous in that there is no component of this section where the students are left to discover understandings that other uh, that others who are knowledgeable in the field have determined or agreed upon. The information in this section is presented using a variety of methods including worksheets, demonstrations, 
notes, readings, research, and group learning activities. It is important to note that the teacher is not to present the information in the section as the only way to understand it, but rather as what others in the field have agreed upon. Another important note that should be made at this point is that this is the information that most of society, including learners themselves, would identify as what needs to be known. In other words, the content of the course. This presentation becomes a demanding task in that the discrimination that is required um, is going to also require appropriate preparation as many instructors will not be experienced in this type of presentation. This section of the model also calls for the students to return to their practical problems, hypotheses, possible solutions that were elicited in the first stage and to modify them based on the additional information to which they have been exposed. In this course, much of this functioning of this stage is addressed through the video clips that are used to introduce the topics. The intent of this stage is to confront learners with other ways of understanding the phenomenon or concepts and to de de deliberate <laughs> excuse me, to deliberately create cognitive dissonance or a sense of intellectual discomfort caused by being exposed to ideas that are conflicting. Learners will be driven as a result to reduce cognitive dissonance by rejecting those that are deemed inappropriate for them, assimilating some and accommodating others. In deliberately creating cognitive dissonance, it is imperative that the learner's initial conceptions as uh, expressed in the expressing stage are clearly expressed so that the conflicting ideas are clear in the learner's mind. It's also important to ensure that the rejection of alternative conceptions is minimized and opportunities for assimilation accommodation are maximized. One way to understand this is that ideas that will be rejected lie outside of the learner's individual learner's zone of proximal development as um, determined through Lev Vygotsky's social constructivist um, theory that was uh, described in an earlier video clip. It is therefore, it therefore becomes important for the instructor to tailor the presentation of learning alternatives to each individual within a learning community. Unfortunately, in most learning communities, this is impossible due to large class sizes, due to time constraints, um, due to, to a large volume of content that needs to be covered, etc. As a result, um, an alternative strategy is used in the PBL methodologies within this course. This is done by having each individual identify the problems within the context or situations as appropriate to their own experiences and to their own schema. Learners are encouraged to discuss all ideas in the tutorial sessions and through the use of various communication applications employed in this course. Finally, moving on to the third and final stage, judging alternatives. In this phase, learners should be encouraged to test their initial preconceptions as well as the learning alternatives to which they were exposed during phase two. This would be done in the context of this course by conducting additional reading and thinking, conducting discussions with others in the course, and ultimately coming to a consensual decision about the problems and the solutions under discussion with your peers. As much as possible, the testing process should be learner-directed and open-ended, that is, allowing for a number of possible solutions. In terms of their occurring within this course, the processes described in this phase will be addressed in the tutorial sessions and in all of the activities that are conducted using the asynchronous technologies listed earlier in the course. By interposing procedural cycles, the same format as above, that is, um, learning, expressing ideas, learning ideas, and then judging ideas, it's possible to have learners work in a synchronized fashion on both concepts and processes. The conceptual cycle would concentrate on the concepts which are used to understand events and ideas as they are encountered in the world. And this is um, exemplified or graphically uh, presented through the large circle that's in the middle of the screen. The procedural cycle would focus on skills, attitudes, and habits of mind that aid in the formation of concepts. And these are diagrammed uh, with the smaller circles that are um, attached to each one of the larger ideas. 
So the procedural thinking cycle that is next to expressing ideas and a separate procedural thinking idea uh, cycle that is next to learning ideas, etc. The procedural cycle can be instituted for each of these phases then, and Ben's 2008 states that these could be described as follows. So the expressing ideas procedural cycle would be used for developing expertise for expressing ideas. The learning ideas one would be used for developing expertise for learning ideas. And the judging ideas one would be used for developing expertise for judging ideas. The theoretical framework for this particular video clip is the uh, paper that we've been referencing. So Ben's 2008 Science and Technology Pedagogical Framework Teaching and Learning Based on Constructivist Learning Principles. And I will be providing the URL that is so shown there uh, in the WebCT version of this course as well. And finally, the synthesis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, why can't what and how students learned be ensured? What is meant by learning when con dealing with constructivist learning? And how is this fundamentally different than a typical conception of learning? Number two, why does the Benz model require the elicitation of learners' con prior conceptions? How is this fundamentally different than typical conceptions of learning? And number three, what types of assessment tasks would be appropriate for learning that occurs in an environment similar to that described by this model? Would it end an exam at the end of the course cut it? Why or why not? And fourthly, since the model is a cycle, or more appropriately, a series of cycles, the judging alternatives phase must have an effect on the expressing learner's prior conceptions. What might these effects be? And what should the learner be able to demonstrate as a result? This issue is closely tied to the completion of the second concept map and the reflection activity as described in the outline for this course posted in WebCT.